uh, birth control. Uh, I'm assuming the question is, can we use it or not? <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, so uh, let's think this, this thing through our grid again. Um, will it violate scripture? If the use of the birth control is preventing conception, not destroying life after it's been conceived, if it's simply preventing conception from happening, I don't see any teaching at all in Scripture that, that prevents that or speaks to it. I just don't. I don't think it's there. I think you've got to really, only a f- confused fundamentalist would come up with Bible verses supporting uh, uh, anti-birth control use. It's just not there. Um, so I think there's, there's freedom of conscience. Now, some people have a conscience issue that, that, that they're bound by, and, and, and that's okay. I don't think that's something we should force on anyone. I think some people use birth control because the wife had a very difficult pregnancy and almost lost her life, and, and so that's good for her. Or the husband's gotten busy and his career is crazy, or he lost a job and can't support his family and not really want to have it anymore. I mean, our question behind this is how many kids should we have? I have no clue. I have yet to find a verse that gives us the number. We know children are a blessing, we know children are heritage from the Lord. We know children are not to be despised as a hassle and a pain and an interruption to our life, but to be received as a gift from God and a blessing by which he loves us and demonstrates his, his uh, care for us and he sanctifies us through it. So we shouldn't be avoiding children for selfish reasons, but there might be some very practical reasons or health reasons um, or stage of life seasons where a couple chooses to exercise the use of birth control, and I have zero problem with it. Now, some of you right here want me to make a big issue of this, and we're just not. We're just not going to. It's just not there. Should you have convictions about it? Great. Well, we had a friend in college, got married, and she read every hardcore con- conservative religious book on birth control, and she was sending us emails constantly about the sin of birth control. Do you know what ended up happening? No one wants to talk to her anymore. It's just obnoxious, right? It's just, what planet are you living on? And about four years later, she's like, um, my conscience is kind of changed on this one. Sorry for being so obnoxious. No problem. So I have no problem with you having conviction of conscience on the issue. It becomes wrong when you force others to be bound to what, uh, your, your conscience. That's a problem when you want to take something that is not spoken to clearly in Scripture or not prevented uh, 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 clearly in Scripture and then bind everyone's conscience. Oftentimes the church is bound by the pastor's conference. Uh, uh, <laughs> pastor's conference. Pastor's conscience. Because he gets the most airtime. He has the most influence. He gets to talk the most. And so whatever I think is right or wrong, the church tends to gravitate toward that, which is really unhealthy. That's why I, 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 I hesitate to even say where I land on these things because I don't want my conscience to bound your conscience. I want to give us a grid through which we think biblically with love at, at the foundation, grace uh, as the flavor of culture, and eye to God's glory, loving each other as the end, and then we work through these issues together so that we can maintain unity despite lots of diversity on, on lots of different topics. So one couple might think this, great. One couple might think this, great. If, if they start warring or being divisive or, or, or making us feel guilty about that, that's a problem then. That's more of a sin than where they landed on the issue. Okay? So anything else, Ken Adam, you want to add to this? I just say with the married couple, this is a two one that's in agreement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he said for the recording, for it's important for a married couple to pursue building an agreement around this. So if the wife's conscience is bound by something and the husband's isn't, he doesn't, shouldn't just run over her. He should work to understand where she's at and read what she's reading and process through and think through the issue biblically together. Maybe pursue the wisdom of some older couples, godly couples they could learn from. So they can come to a place of, of agreement where they agree to use this or not use that, and there's oneness there. Otherwise, it can be very, very divisive and hurtful for the marriage. So pursue oneness on that issue. Great. Any other topic? Okay, great.